Welcome to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. I am your host, and I'm also a life transition coach. I help people who are dealing with change, whether it's welcome or unwelcome change. We humans have that love, re- love hate relationship with change because we need it for growth and to keep things interesting, but we just don't like the discomfort of the unfamiliar. And there are so many things really that can help us to move into the unfamiliar with more grace and more ease. And one of the goals of this show is to bring that kind of information to people to help them make better friends with change. Because whether we like it or not, change is the one constant that's always going to be out there. Change is coming whether we are open to it or not. So I figure we might as well be open to it and make the best of it, make it smooth and make it productive. So that's our job here at Change It Up Radio. I am also an author. I have written three books, Chakras, The Magnificent Seven, which really helps people with tuning and balancing their chakras. And then moving into those areas of loss and change. I've written a book called Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? And this is a book with short chapters and then lots of tools and processes and little articles that one can read to help you move through your grief and not get stuck in it. And then my most recent book is really one of my favorites, too. It's a little book here called Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. And what I especially love about this book, it was kind of a passion project for me because after over 28 years of working with people who are dealing with loss in my private practice, I realized that one of the problems is that people don't show up, people don't call, people don't, they they aren't there to support because they're so afraid of saying or doing the wrong thing and making the pain even worse. So saying the right thing when you don't know what to say is a great way to help arm yourself so that you know the productive things that you can do to help someone who's dealing with emotional pain. So that's saying the right thing when you don't know what to say. All of my books are available on Amazon. And by the way, I just recently launched a new website. And I want to encourage you all to go there and grab my free gift, which is a little ebook called 20 Things to Say and Not to Say to people in emotional pain. It's kind of a great cheat sheet that's taken from this book that we were just talking about. So be sure and go to paulashaw.com and grab that free gift. Also, if you want to learn more about Change It Up Radio, this podcast, you can go to changeitupradio.com And all of our former shows are archived there. There's information about being a guest or a sponsor on the show. So lots of good information there too at changeitupradio.com. And also on my personal website, paulashaw.com, there's information about me as a speaker. So if you've got a conference coming up or you've got a, a company where you think the kind of thing that I talk about would be helpful, please reach out to me. And by the way, I just remembered also you'll see on the new website, I offer a complimentary 20-minute consultation for anyone who is dealing with these kinds of issues, loss, grief, change, upheaval, any of those kinds of things. I'd be happy to chat with you for 20 minutes and see if there's work that we can or should do to help you get to a better place. So 
this fall season, we have been talking about resiliency. It's, it's actually become one of my favorite words and favorite concepts because it's that get back up on the horse when you fall off mentality, right? It's that, that part of us that, that strives to figure out another way if the way we're doing something doesn't work. And to that end, I am very excited about the guest that I'm going to introduce you to today. I have known her for many years. I know her as a human being as well as an amazing astrologer. And she is truly one of the great humans on the planet. So let me tell you a little bit about Kimberly Marsh before I bring her on. She's been doing personalized readings in astrology for over 20 years. And this is so interesting to me. While she was earning her degree in anthropology, which that was my secret fantasy. If I hadn't gone education and, and communications, I was going to go anthropology. But she worked closely with medicine men, shaman, and tribal elders, focusing on cross-cultural healing and specializing in ancient Chinese, Native American, and Mesoamerican healing practices. Then she realized that studying astrology could allow her to go even deeper into her intuitive practices by gaining that better understanding of each soul's blueprint. And she has been doing that work in addition to so much more for the, over 20 years now. In addition to her astrology readings and workshops, she also specializes in life and business coaching and is co-authoring an astrology book that will be published next year. So Kimberly, please join us because we have so much to talk about. Hi, Paula. Thank you Here so much for having is. me. How are you? I am very well, darling. I'm just going to switch our views so I can see you. Perfect. So your beautiful shining countenance is a pleasure <laughs> to have on my show. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And I just wanted to say when you were doing your introduction and you mentioned making friends with change, that's so important right now. I, I, I feel like that is the mantra we should all be following if we can. Making friends, making peace, making friends with change because it's really not stopping anytime soon. We're like <laughs> in the middle of, of this, you know, snow globe getting shooken up and everything's just sort of falling all around us. And it's, it's really hard to know what to do with that energy. Mm -hmm. So thank you, you know, for what you're doing to help people ease into these uncertain times. Yes. Yes. And you know, I love that. I know when you say what you just said, it's not just coming from off the top of your head because <laughs> you're a well aware of what's going on astrologically. And so I, before we get into how you got to all that, I have a question to ask you about that. So what you're basically saying is here we are at the end of 2021. We all know 2020 was a crazy year that rocked our worlds in an, never before experienced way, you know, not during any of our lifetimes anyway, we've, we've had pandemics before, <clears throat> but not while any of us who are currently alive were here. <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> got a bit of a frog going on here. But so this change thing that you're saying, get friendly with change. Are we like in for a lot more of that? I mean, is it a month? Is it six months? Is it a whole right. other year? And you know, that's what astrology is useful for is timing. Like when's it going to start? When's it going to stop? That's what we yes. all want to know. Right. And so, so I do these, you know, monthly moon circles. Mm -hmm. And I remember in 2019, towards the end of 2019, I had all my my people, all my clients at the circle, and I'm telling them, listen, 2020, you're going to have to prepare. There's, you know, I don't know what's, what's going to happen, but we need to be prepared. And, you know, I suggested making sure you have extra savings, 
make sure you have extra food, you know, water. I, I, we didn't know what was going to happen, but we knew something big was going to happen. And sure enough, I should have been telling people to have extra toilet paper because that <laughs> seemed to be the hot commodity. Um, too, you too. know, <laughs> right? But um, sure enough, so 2020 happened and everyone's like, wow, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. And, you know, so as astrologers, we saw that planetary alignment coming. We knew, okay, oh. something big and life altering is going to happen. Yes. So yes. now Huge. things have shifted. They've eased up a little bit, but things are still not, we haven't gone back to the way we used to be. And, and that's the thing. We're never going back to the way right. we used to be. Uh, the, the biggest astrological event that's happening right now, it actually, you know, so with astrology, it's not just what's going on in the sky today, but it's charts. It's how it's affecting charts. So right. I have a natal chart. You have a natal chart. Also countries have natal charts. Businesses have natal charts. And so what I look to is the, the natal chart of the United States. Mm -hmm. The natal chart of the United States, it's, it's starting next year. It's going through a Pluto return. And now this is getting really technical. But this Pluto return that it's having, um, that's the revolution. That's the revolution. So oh. everything that's been building up to this, mm -hmm. it's like the beginning of the revolution. And now we're in the middle of it. Now we're like in the middle of this revolution. And it's going to start to really kick into effect next year. Now, the United States is the leader of the world. So this affects the worldwide level. Mm -hmm. We just had a... Um, full moon in Aries yes. yesterday that was at 27 degrees Aries that actually aspected that Pluto in the United States chart that I'm talking about so there's all these little you know pieces of the puzzle that are coming together so again you know not to get too technical but Pluto is at the late degrees of Capricorn right now and what it's doing is it is bringing down the system it's it's revealing the corruption mm. and the dysfunction within governments and corporations ah. and yes and so this has to happen this has to yes. happen for humanity's sake for humanity's yes. sake and and for the planet like the planet can't survive the way we're treating it right now no. so this is all it's all part of the process we just got caught up in it and you know we've never experienced anything like this so until that Pluto revolution is complete, we're going to keep having this sort of chaos because things are having to get, basically the whole system's getting torn down so that it can be rebuilt. Mm. And we have, um, you know, the energies that are, are playing here, the two sides is we have the old order and then we have the new order and they're mm. battling it. They're battling it out. Like the yes. old order wants to hang on to the way things have always been. And the new order is saying, no, we can't do this. This isn't going to sustain us. And so there's this, you know, this battle going on. And I've got to say the new order is going to win because that once that Pluto moves out of Capricorn into Aquarius, that's when progress, that's when it's all about progress and, ah. and we're living in a new way and that's going to be happening over the next few years so the best we can do in the meantime is to not focus on the outside world but focus on our inner world um you know and 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 stay tuned in with yourself stay grounded try not to get hot-headed try not to get too involved because the energy is intense yes very intense and you know when I began, I was talking about this word resiliency. Yeah. And one of the things that I think you've pointed out here that's such a, a perfect tie-in is that when we have a sense that what's happening isn't totally out of control, not too crazy, and, and, and we don't know that there's going to be a happy ending, so to speak, it can really produce fear and even being paralyzed not having that resilience. And so I love just in the nutshell that you just shared, first of all, the world revolution, that conjured up some scary feelings for me because immediately you're seeing 
battles and uh, into your mind come pictures from Les Mis and the French Revolution and, and the American Revolution and lots of people dying and all of that. But I love what you're, what you then came to is it's, it's bringing to the surface the stuff that's got to go, that's corrupt, that's not productive and not taking us toward that vibration that we really want on a higher level. Um, and this is what I think is one of the best parts of astrology. Like you said, it, it gives us hope. And it also reminds us that everything's kind of in its rightful order. Absolutely. Absolutely. So even though there's chaos going on all around us, there is order to it. There is yeah. order to that chaos. And it's all part of the bigger picture. Uh, you know, we're, we're on our way to getting to a, a bigger, better, more sustainable way of supporting yes. humanity and equality, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so what's going on now? Yes, absolutely. It's very uncomfortable. It's mm -hmm. very uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but it has to happen to get us to where we want to be. And, you know, that timing, if, if you don't know when something's going to start and you don't know when it's going to end and you think right. you're just stuck in it forever mm -hmm. that, that can make you feel like you're going insane like how much of this can I possibly handle exactly and so that's what I like about astrology is a gift because we know okay if I know I can if, if it's a couple of years and I can do it for a couple of years but if I think it's going to be that way for the rest of my life I may not have that same sense of resiliency that you're talking that's right about. that's right because then you'd be discouraged overwhelmed and feeling kind of hopeless rather than seeing that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly. And you know, one of the things I love that you said also, Kimberly, because this concept of resiliency that we've been talking about, it's an inside job. You know, it has to happen within you. It begins within you anyway. You, you may take actions in the outer world as a result of that resiliency, but what you were saying in terms of don't panic, don't go crazy, don't start climbing the walls, you know, and because I mean, I know on the news, even last night, I heard people saying, the democracy is, is in danger, the democracy is going down. I mean, there could be a lot of fear produced <laughs> by the kinds of things that are happening right now. And so I think what you shared with us, like, stay keep building the inner fortress right Absolutely. get stronger within and no and don't be too reactive i feel like that's also what you were saying huh you know i'm really at this point paula i'm i'm done with social media i'm done with the news it's mm -hmm. not serving any positive purpose in yeah. my life yeah. Um, you know, and so I've actually, I've cut that out for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how much more time I have to work on creative projects yes. and to focus that energy somewhere positive. Mm -hmm. The world is going to continue to do what the world is going to continue to do. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing we can do about that. Unless you're a frontline person out there that's an activist, then let it go, let it do its thing. Mm -hmm. And focus on you, focus on your energy, focus on your vibration, do nice things for yourself, like listening to this podcast, do things that, you know, you find uplifting. Yes. So important also because astrologically during this time, we're in this window where, um, you know, our mind and our thoughts, and, and I think this is true all the time, our mind and our thoughts are, are, you know, they're attracting our reality. They're creating our reality. Right, they're right. attracting situations, but astrologically that's even more sensitive right now. There's this window where we're really, you know, because we're having all these, these different cycles coming to an end and starting over again and planets transitioning into different signs and stuff. So we're really laying down the foundation for, I mean, depending on how old you are, at least for the next decade of your life, it could be for the rest of your life. Wow. So how do you want to live? Do you want to live in a state of fear mm -hmm. or do you want to live in a state of joy? Yeah. And you have to choose that now and start living it now. And you know, that's such a powerful concept. You're talking about how our track, our, our thoughts attract and create our reality. 
I'm not sure all our listeners understand that, but I think on so many levels that is true. And, and, you know, I'm one of the pioneers in the field of energy psychology, and I can tell you for sure, you know, what one of the principles of energy psychology is that everything's energy and like attracts like. So even if you only go with that one principle, if you're putting out positive thoughts and, and thoughts of a beautiful reality, chances of attracting that back to you are much more powerful because that's a like vibration to a higher yeah. vibration. Absolutely. And, you know, we all go through ups and downs in life and it's been a tough past few years, oh, you know, yes. and, and that's what I'm saying is it's not, we're not out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not vibrating in a state of joy, sometimes you have to fake it until you make it, you know, and, yeah. and trick yourself into it. Um, but again, with those, those cycles, um, with astrology, we're going through a real, it's either a, a breakthrough or breakdown energy mm. right now. And, and uh. we have a choice. And this is what I like about astrology. I mean, what I love about astrology is being able to work with clients and seeing in their charts, you know, when is that timing going to open for you to really have that breakthrough? Yes. You know, when is it time to, to push forward? When are these cycles changing? But you know, with that being said, we, we, again, we always have a choice. We have a choice. And this is how I have found as an astrologer that the universe works is that, you know, if we've got this breakthrough or breakdown energy and we're not using what we have in a constructive way, mm -hmm. then the universe will break us down until we learn how to use it constructively. So we get deconstructed mm -hmm. until we can become constructive. Is, is my experience with clients, with myself. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll joke with clients sometimes and I'll say, you know, listen, if you don't start getting up and make some positive changes in your life, the universe is going to put you in a timeout and you do not want it to put you in a timeout <laughs> because that is no fun. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's really about being in charge of the change. The, the power of astrology is it gives us the timing and the windows and the the areas of our life where we can forge forward and make those positive changes. And so we can be in charge because there's so much power in that. Nobody mm -hmm. likes when change happens to them and it's out of their control. Right. But if we can you know, gain a little bit of control on that and know mm -hmm. where to put our energy, you know, that's a whole different story. Helps a whole lot. You know what Kimberly occurred to me? It might be that some of the people listening to this podcast don't really understand the principles of astrology. Can you talk a little bit about how do you know these things you know? You know what, <laughs> I, what are I can, the underlying? I can things? try to help my husband all the time. He's like, I don't understand it. I don't get it, but there's something to it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I listen to what you say. It's true. Um, you know, I'm, I, I, I don't know why it makes sense that when this planet's here, this is going to happen. All I know is that it's cycles is it is is that cycles repeat themselves and we can study these cycles and if you know what happened in the past you can know what would happen in the future and mm. you know for me personally so are you saying you mean if you know when a certain alignment because this is all based on how things are lined up in the heavens right the yes. where the planets are where the sun and the moon yes. are and all of that correct yes okay yes. so you're saying and, and, and the other thing I wanted, it, this is an ancient study, right? Like astrology oh, yeah. didn't just oh, yeah. come around the last 10 years. It's, it, yeah, no, it's, it, there's some form of it's always been around. Um, so for me, I'll just share my own personal story of, mm -hmm. of how I became a believer in Great. astrology, um, talking about cycles. So I've always been intuitive, you know, and, and, um, used to do tarot and stuff like that when I was younger. And then when I was in my mid twenties, actually, I was going through my Saturn return, which is a big deal in astrology. Yes. Um, and, and it was back when I was an anthropology student, I was actually working as a manicurist in a spa to put myself through college mm -hmm. and all these astrologers showed up, you know, and they became my clients and they would tell me stuff that was happening in my life. They'd be like, when's your birthday? And they'd look me up and they'd tell me, and they were so <laughs> right on. 
they were so right on. I was like, what is, what is up with this? Yeah. And so, you know, um, they became my mentors. I, and I became slightly obsessed with astrology <laughs> and just following my chart. And one thing that they taught me was that eclipses, when we have eclipses, that they are the most powerful activators that we have. Oh, I didn't know that. Eclipses. Mm. Yeah. Eclipses are super powerful. And eclipses repeat every 19 years. The the lunar nodes repeat every 19 years. So we're also going to have like full moons or new moons. Those are going to repeat every 19 years too. But eclipses are so supercharged, you know, that you know something big is going to happen Uh with that eclipse energy. And so I began to, you know, I've had significant life events happen. And Mm -hmm. so I went back, you know, sort of time traveled back through my natal chart to look at what was going on during these life events, Uh because I, I want to know if it's going to happen again, you know, and you can do this for a marriage, for a job, for you know, losing a loved one. There's so many things, whatever big life events you have, you can go back and look what, you know, what was going on at that time. And you can Mm -hmm. see when is it going to happen again? And so, um, when I was, um, 12 years old, um, there was an eclipse that happened and it happened on my birthday. My birthday happens to be the winter solstice, December 21st. Uh And this was a total lunar eclipse on December 21st. And I was like, wow, that is, that's amazing because I had a very, I had two tragic events happen in my life that year. Um, In June of that year, uh, my grandmother passed away. Mm-hmm. And then six months later, um, which ended up being one week after that eclipse. So it was the end of December. Mm-hmm. My brother passed away. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, that was, that was when I was a little girl. So I counted, wow. okay, what's 19 years from that eclipse. And that took me to 2010. And so I was actually discovering all this right around 2009, so mm-hmm. I'm thinking, okay, something big's going to happen in 2010. And sure enough, okay, it was that same eclipse that happened on my birthday, winter solstice that year. It, it uh-huh. was a full moon in Gemini at 29 degrees Gemini. Um, so June, six months before that eclipse, my father passed away oh. one week after. And this is exact. This is like exact timing. Mm. One week after my other grandmother passed away. So, you know, when that happened, I was like, okay, (laughs) there's something to this. There's absolutely something to this. Um, And so let's see here. It'll be 2029 is when that eclipse is happening again. Am I planning to be on an island somewhere? (laughs) All alone with my loved ones, very safe and sound. But, um, you know, and it's not always like predicting death and tragedy. But for me, that that showed me that there is something to this, that those similar events happened, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I did a, I actually did a moon circle last night for the full moon in Aries. And I had a client on who, um, no, it was just a full moon. It's not an eclipse, but it's Mm -hmm. a full moon. And it was exact degree activating stuff in her chart. And I've been telling her, I'm like, it's, it's, it's time to move on from your husband. It's time to dissolve mm. the relationship and get a divorce. And so I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, what happened 19 years ago? Cause this is that same energy. Yeah. And she does the math and she goes, I divorced my first husband. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. So it's there. There's something to these cycles. Oh, there's no doubt about it. In fact, I will share with our listeners that Kimberly is my astrologer, and she recently did my birth chart. I try to do my, my um, give myself that reading every year on my birthday. And there were things she told me that were coming up and that were happening next year that I had not even shared with her were in the works. You know, so it was like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like even more amazing than I remembered it to be. And, and while we're at that little point in what we're saying right now, Kimberly, and before we take a little break, um, give everybody your contact info, your website, or the way they can reach out to you if they want to do a reading of their own. 
Oh, sure. Absolutely. It's just, it's www.kimberlymarsh.com <laughs> and it's um, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-E and then Marsh, M-A-R-S-H.com. Perfect. All right. We're going to take a quick little break and then we will be right back to finish our discussion about astrology. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw and my guest today, Kimberly Marsh, who is truly an amazing astrologer. And I can tell you that because she is mine. And I have also attended many of her moon circles where she does, first of all, she tells us what's going on in, in the sky, so to speak, going on astrologically at that time. And then she looks at each individual's chart who's in the moon circle and tells you how it's affecting you. So these moon circles are incredible. And if you want to get more information about those, just go to KimberlyMarsh.com and you want to get on her list because then she lets you know when they're coming. And also, Kimberly, there's something pretty exciting that you've got in the works for next summer, don't you? You're already looking at 2022. Do you want to talk a little bit I about am. that? I am. Yes, I think you're talking. I'm just going to grab it right here. I think you're okay. talking about this fabulous Italy tour mm -hmm. that we're going to do. Yes. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Um, so talking about the cycles and the ups and downs and everything, I, you know, I, I realized I needed something fabulous to look forward to. <laughs> yes. And so I just started putting this together. I actually, I was putting it together for myself and I thinking about all my girlfriends and my friends and my clients and like, you know what, we all need something fabulous to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And so I put together this retreat. It's an eight day retreat that's going to be happening um, outside of Lucca, Italy in July. And there's all kinds of workshops we're going to be doing, wine tours. We have a private chef coming. Paula is going to be presenting and helping us <laughs> to seal it all in before we leave. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. Now, is Luca in the north of Italy or the south? It's in, so it's in Tuscany. It's near um, oh, Flying sure. to Pisa. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's right outside of that. And where we're staying is actually 40 minutes away from Luca. Um, and it's where all the thermal waters are. It's a little bit cooler climate because I know mm. sometimes Italy can be hot in the summertime. So we'll be cooling off and hanging out in the foresty Sounds. part amazing sounds amazing I know. so Kimberly just to to kind of bring this back to this idea of resiliency um, for for the average person let's say that they're they're new to the things we're talking about today but they they I mean everybody kind of knows these days what their sign is you know and they know that that has something to do with who you are. In fact, before I ask the question I was going to ask, let me ask you to explain briefly to everybody um, the, the two major signs that I understand. We have a birth sign, a sun sign, and then we have a rising sign, correct? Absolutely. Could and you explain what those are? Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> our sun sign, that's what everybody knows because we know you know, like if you go read your horoscope, you're going to be reading your horoscope for your sun sign, which is actually incorrect. You want to read your horoscope for your rising sign because the horoscope is written on the house system. I know it's complex and I actually teach classes on this. So if you're really wanting to learn more, you can sign up for one of my classes. But just know in the meantime, you want to find out what your rising sign, which is also called your ascendant. And mm -hmm. the reason why is that ascendant for me is the absolutely most important point on the chart because everything else in that chart comes from that point. Everything else comes from that point. So our sun sign, that's like sort of what our soul energy is. And it's important, mm -hmm. but it's just not the most important. It's not, it's not everything. Okay. So it, it is important, but it's not everything, but we know that because the sun is in the different signs for a certain amount of time for 30 days 
we know it's going to be, you know, the, the sun will be in um, Scorpio for 30 days from right. this date in October till this date in November. So that's easier to keep track of. You're not having to run to an ephemeris and, you know, put a chart together and figure <laughs> out all the other stuff. But, you know, so for me, the ascendant, which is your rising sign, and that's how people see you. So, you know, if you have a cancer rising, people are going to see you probably as sensitive, emotional, nurturing, you know, and you might have an airy sun, which isn't really any of those qualities. So people are seeing you in a way that you don't really feel like you are. And so there can be a disconnect for people with something like that going on. Mm. Um, you know, it, it just depends on the rest of the chart. It also depends on what house is your sun in, you know, if you have um your son in the 12th house you probably don't want to be seen you just you know you might be a little shyer introverted type of person if you have it in the fifth house you know you you might want to be more active and and social and at parties and stuff like that so it's about placement too it's it's planets signs placements um also we have to look at aspects what's going on with the conversations the other planets are having um, and then we look at the moon and the moon is sort of like our feelings and our emotions. You can look at someone's mercury. This is how they communicate and how they receive communication. You know, communication is a two way street. So we can go on and, and we, we aren't just one thing. We aren't just what our sun is. We have all these other planets that um, come together to complete the whole person. Yes. Wow, that is so amazing. So, you know, one of the questions that occurs to me people might have is, the, you know, we, we talk about fate, like, oh, it's my fate, you know. So if I'm born with a certain sign, is it like then my fate to be a certain person or does that just show me what my tendencies are or my challenges are? How does that work? Yeah, that's such a great question. Um, so when I do readings, I'm actually looking at three different charts. Okay. So the first chart I'm looking at is the natal chart. And for me, that is the soul's blueprint. So if you were to believe in reincarnation, that would be the energy you were working with when you died at your past life. Okay. That's like, mm. I consider it like the luggage you're carrying. Okay. Mm. It's, it's good and bad, you know, good and bad. And so that's what you bring into this life with you. And then I look at this second chart, which is called the progressed chart. Mm -hmm. And that shows me how your soul has changed since you've been alive on the planet, how you have progressed. Mm. Since you've had different experiences and been alive. And so, you know, God forbid, if somebody were to die that day, that would be their luggage or karma. They would be taking uh, in see. the next life. Uh -huh. And then I look at the transiting chart, which shows me how the planets in the sky right now are having conversations with these other two charts. So, and, and again, so I'm looking at the natal chart. Yes, that's the energy we came in with. We have our progress chart. That's how we progress. But we always have choices, Paula. We always have choice and we have, you know, the power to use that energy how we want to. If mm -hmm. you know that you've got, you know, certain planets and signs and aspects going on in your chart that might make you a little bit lazier, let's say, it might make mm -hmm. you a little lazy, unmotivated, uh -huh. but you have a choice, you know, you can discipline yourself and, you know, make that change happen and, and get up off the couch and make stuff happen. So. <laughs> sometimes just being validated that, yeah, you know, you've got that in your chart. You are kind of lazy, but guess what? You don't have to be now that you're aware of it. You can right. change that. Got it. So it is, it's, it's opening our eyes to some of what our tendencies are, our tendencies, our gifts, and perhaps our challenges as well. Is that correct? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, mm. it, there's so much to it. There's so mm. much to it for when I see it, I see it. It's very psychological. It's very spiritual. We can see traumas that happen. We can see relationships. We can mm -hmm. see um, a lot to do with the families. You know, I see a lot of issues with people with, I can see if it's the mom or if it's the dad or both or what's going on. Right. You know, and, and then it's an opportunity to heal those situations. Oh, that is so great. So insightful. And Kimberly, I love everything that you have shared with us today. 
And before we have to say goodbye here, is there any last thought or tip or anything that you would like to share with our listeners in regards to what we've been chatting about today? Yeah, you know, maybe just a couple of things. First of all, I, just to finish up on what we were just saying is that, you know, it's my goal when I work with my clients to get our baggage to exactly what it is we want to be carrying around so that we're not lugging big, heavy, you know, junk around with us anymore to lighten yes. our load. I like to travel lightly. So that's mm. my, my biggest goal when working with my clients is to travel lightly, to lighten up. Um, right. secondly, if anybody is in, you know, a place of just feeling frustrated or, you know, despair or whatever, contact an astrologer, because I guarantee you change is right around the corner, that there's mm -hmm. opportunities coming right around the corner. Don't give up. And then finally, you know, um, I, I, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, with everything that is going on in the world right now. And um, what we've all been going through, I want to thank you, Paula, for creating this opportunity for people to find healing and to find some peace and to find some comfort. Oh, I love, I love what you said. That was just perfect, Kimberly. And, and you know what? It is so true. And I'm, I, of course, I had no idea all that our discussion would entail today, but I love that if I were somebody brand new to astrology, or even if I knew a little bit, I think from what you shared today, I'd have so much more clarity and certainly more hope. And I can't recommend highly enough to those of you, if you're thinking about reaching out to an astrologer, this is the woman you no. wanna be talking to. And you can reach her at Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-E -E Marsh.com. So thank you so much, dear, for blessing us with your oh, insight, you, your knowledge, and, and just your light. My pleasure. And, thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you to my listeners. You know you can hear this podcast on every major podcast platform, including iHeartRadio and Podopolo. And we'll be back with you again next week. And we're continuing this theme of resiliency throughout our whole fall season. And I think each, each guest has been bringing a different piece of the puzzle and it's coming together beautifully. So stay with us. And by the way, don't forget to like this podcast, share it if you do find value in it and subscribe. Then you'll always know when we post a new episode. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. And bless you, Kimberly. You gave us so much today. Bye. Bye-bye.